Today we're going to be making a two transistor, two LED flasher circuit. You'll see here we've got an NPN transistor there, an NPN transistor there, a pair of capacitors here and a pair of resistors there and we've got current limiting resistors over here. The purpose of making this two transistor flasher is actually just to practice uh, soldering skills. In order to make this circuit you'll probably want a clear um, diagram. This is a drawing showing you where the different parts go and it's drawn over size and it's quite nice in that it shows you the identifying marks on the parts. It shows you where's the little flat parts on the LEDs and it shows you the flat side and the round side of these transistors and it shows you on the electrolytic capacitors it shows you where the negative lead is orientated towards and it also shows you the three track brakes that we'll be needing to make. Get this at www.robotscience.co.za off the website. If I for some reason forget to put this out there please email me info at robotscience.co.za to remind me to scan this and put this up on the website. Here's the schematic diagram. Um, you'll see here we've got 470 ohm current limiting resistors. That's fine. You can use 680 ohm or 1 kilo ohms. And we've got 100 kilo ohm resistors here and 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors over here and two NPN transistors. We're not going to explain how the circuit works but suffice it to say that it starts up and then this transistor and this transistor and they switch each other off and on by charging and discharging through these resistors and capacitors here to light up the LEDs there. So that's all the theory we're going to get involved with this time around. So what you'll notice if you look at this board here this is a test circuit that we built for the teenagers just to make it nice and easy to build. We've got the shiny track side up on the variable board. Now normally when you use a variable board you put the parts on this side which doesn't have the shiny tracks and you do the soldering on this side and what that means is all the time you're putting the part on that side you're flipping it over to solder. So what we decided to do is to make things easier in this particular instance by working with the variable board upside down. This ball of stuff here looks like putty, it's called Prestic or maybe in your country it's called Blue Tech. We put a nice ball of Blue Tech onto our working space and we take a small piece of variable board and we put the variable board down onto the blob of Prestic just to stop it from falling around. We are ready to start. This is a transistor. It's not critical which order you start in, but we're going to start with the two transistors, the 2N3904. Good idea to have a magnifying glass if you, uh, if you battle to see these tiny little numbers on this part. We're going to just um, stretch these apart a little bit and I'm going to zoom in a little bit like that. And we're going to put these legs in like so. And what you will notice is that I've spread the legs of the transistor a little bit apart. This is our soldering iron stand over here. And every time I pick up the soldering iron, you must wipe the tip of the iron, just the tip part on this quite wet cellulose sponge. Don't wipe it in the middle here because the ball will just go round and round the tip and drive you crazy. So wipe it on the edge here till you've got a beautiful clean shiny tip and the waste will fall in there. So every time you pick up the solder iron give the tip a little wipe so that you because if your soldering iron isn't clean you're going to make a terrible mess on your board. So what I'm doing here is I'm just soldering that transistor in place. You'll notice that I've soldered on the top side of this ferro board which is an unconventional way to work. This is a 680 ohm quarter watt resistor which is a nice resistor. It's blue, grey, brown and gold if you can't see the values there. And you'll notice I'm not putting the parts down flat on the board as you would normally do because I want to be able to get in there with a soldering iron. nice clean solder work. This is a 100 
kilo ohm resistor which is brown black yellow and gold the next thing i'm going to do more or less in the middle of the board is i'm going to make a break between what will effectively be the two transistors base connection using a twist drill just in my hand number five and another 2N3904 transistor you can see the number if I just catch the light there like that starting in the bot whoops jumped out so we're putting it in there like that the press stick if you stick it through and it sticks into the press stick that will also hold it in place while you're working we just soldering that transistor into place here's a clipper these are nice types of clippers this is my favorite one had it for a number of years we just clip off those excess leads on what would usually be the parts component side of the veil board but as I said we flip this veil board over so that the students can populate this thing and solder without actually having to take it off of this blob of Prestic. Remember to keep your circuit orientated correctly so your negative is going to ultimately connect here and your positive is ultimately going to connect there. And this is a quick easy fun circuit to build. When you're done you can leave it in your motor car to deter thieves from wanting to steal what belongs to you. Remember this is a column and these are rows. If you build the circuit looking at the circuit diagram as I drew it and you've got the lines running, the tracks running from top to bottom, your circuit's not going to work. We want to make another track break over here and we're going to need another track break over here. So this is a symmetrical, nice and easy circuit to build, nicely symmetrically laid out. What you will notice with the LED is that is a bit of a flat indentation on the one side so that flat indent there is closest to the cathode so what you'll see is it's round but closer to the one leg it's flat there I'm sure you can see that clearly now the one leg is longer than the other leg and the one leg is shorter the shorter leg is nearer to the part with the flat indentation on it that's the cathode and the longer leg is away from the flat indent and that's the anode. We want the LED cathode side to be facing south or towards negative. When I put that part in there like that you will see that the flat part is there and the short leg is towards the negative side of the board and the longer leg the anode side is in the top rail here which is going to be the positive power bus we're just going to solder it go in quickly make a nice shiny silver solder joint we're going to put the other one on the other side also with a cathode south so I've tilted the uh, LED out slightly so that uh, we can see what we're doing here the next step is to put the capacitors into the circuit and you'll notice there's a negative indicator near to the leg that's negative and the value of the capacitor is there 10 microfarads and uh, again this has got a long and a short leg short leg is negative long leg is positive the negative here needs to be orientated towards the base of the transistor and I'm going to tilt this one out of the way a little bit before I solder that in place I'm going to put the other one in place so this one goes from the collector up there down to the base of this transistor there remember these wires where they cross over they shouldn't touch and I'm just going to solder this in here I'm going to move this one a little bit out of the way so I can get access there and I'm going to put that there. We've got a 100 kilo ohm resistor here coming from the positive rail down to... Oh, so I've made a mistake. Let's see, I've made a mistake. This resistor here was supposed to come down to the base but we've got it 
in the middle here so I need to fix that. So we're going to heat this resistor up there and we're going to pull it out there. We're going to need the tweezers and we're going to put, I don't know if you can see that, but now we are putting it back. This is called troubleshooting and we're putting it back into the circuit and it's lined up in the same row, in the same row as the middle leg of the transistor which is the base. Keep an eye out for mistakes, fix them when you find them. Here's another 100 kilo ohm resistor. Make sure when you put it in here that it's going into the same row as the base which is the middle pin of the transistor there. Then it needs to go up to here. We need the 680 ohm resistor the current limiting resistor in it must go from the cathode of the LED to the collector of the NPN transistor. And we're going to light over a little bit so we can get in there with the soldering iron. So now it's time for us to lift the circuit off the ball of press stick and trim off all the wires. So there we go and everything's looking pretty much good to go. We can connect this power supply on the edge of the board like so. So we'll put the negative there, the positive end. And now you'll see we were lucky. We made one we made one little error and I'm just shading the circuit from the light because uh, that way you can see the LEDs better and you'll notice they are now flashing beautifully. If we have a little bit of a look close up at the circuit at our soldering notice there's no dirt and carbon because we wipe the solder iron every time we pick up the solder iron and you'll notice each little connection is beautifully made this is the example that we just built now. We hope you've enjoyed this video and you can also have a look at www.robotscience.co.za